We're going to talk a bit about our companies and how we perform uh, within this competitive landscape of bulk wine and private label and control label. Um, the Thornhill Companies is a grouping of companies, French Camp Vineyards, Central Coast Wine Services, Pass Robles Wine Services, and uh, Turnkey Wine Brands. And these companies date back to 1973. So the Miller family planted French Camp Vineyards in 1973. And over the course of time, uh, decided or found that it would be in their best interest to uh, build out a winery. And they did that with Central Coast Wine Services in Santa Maria, Santa Maria in the mid-90s. Over the course of time, as Santa Maria and Central Coast Wine Services kind of grew as a region, um, the need for another winery popped up within our system. So we built out Paso Robles Wine Services in the early 2000s. Uh, along with came the need to sell more bulk wine and, and contract more pre-harvest bulk contracts. So turnkey wine brands came into uh, fruition. And uh, now turnkey wine brands facilitates all of our bulk wine sales, all of our bulk wine contracting, all of our grape purchasing, and all of our bulk wine purchasing as well. So I serve as director of supply for these companies. I ensure that the proper supply is coming into the wineries. We're selling the right amount of grapes for the right price and, um, and make sure that our private label and control label programs are well are well supplied as well as our uh, bulk pre-harvest supply contracts. Um, and so the Millers have been in the business for quite some time. Their business has evolved and changed over the years. Uh, this is a shot of, of Steve Miller here on the left with uh, Nicholas and Marshall. Steve, Steve and Thornhill Broom Miller is our president and CEO. Nicholas, Nicholas and Marshall are our, uh, our VPs, our vice presidents of sales and vice president of finance and operations respectively. And so they very much run our company and uh, help guide the direction of, of what it is that, uh, that we do. Um, and you ever wonder what you were thinking at one point in time, like growing a caterpillar underneath your lip and taking a picture? <laughs> I guess that was me. We have Chance Hochschild in the room as well. He's our, direct, our, our director of bulk wine sales now, or excuse me, our bulk wine sales manager. And uh, Chance spent a few years at Turrentine, and then we brought him in the fold of our organization to help drive our bulk wine sales uh, and also be based up on the North Coast to facilitate interactions and meetings with wineries and winemakers up on the North Coast. Um, two state-of-the-art production facilities. That might be a little bit of a stretch, but the facilities are clean and they're nice and uh, they work really well. Um, we do have sustainability certification at our facilities and at our vineyards. Um, so with our facilities, we're CSWA certified. We also have CCOF organic certification at uh, Central Coast Wine Services. So we do make some made with organic wines. Uh, we also grow about 400 acres of organic grapes up in the Paso Robles Highlands, which is where French Camp Vineyards is located. Um, Moving forward, these are some of the brands that we produce. So in addition to bulk wine spec and bulk wine pre-harvest contracts, we do quite a bit by way of private label and control label business. Uh, we also do our own national brands. So these are what we call our own branded products, our own national brands that we produce. We produce them year in and year out, and these will continue to grow and as we service the different markets that we sell into. Uh, Jay Wilkes there being um, an Appalachian brand, uh, Santa Maria Valley, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc, Paso Robles Cabernet. Ballard Lane being um, a Central Coast uh, tier product that hits many by the glass accounts uh, locally and nationally. Smashberry is a red blend, Barrel Burner there is a Chardonnay and, and a Cabernet. Um, so this is actually a really good segue from Adam's presentation because uh, Morton's Tyler Fields, who he had up on the slide, both of those wines came from our winery and from the grapes that we were contracting. Uh, so we have a dedicated grower relations department that gets out there and contracts grapes to help supply our bulk supply contracts. And our, uh, and our brands. And uh, those, those two uh, wines that you saw in the last presentation for Morton's actually came from our facility as well. These are some, some control label brands that we produce, Trace Maria's, R. Bryce, and Dirt Diva. Uh, my associate, Jim Kopp, who will be presenting after me, will speak a little bit more about this side of the business while, while I'll focus more on the supply side, because that's what I do. Uh, but ABC Liquors, Apple Jacks, Lidl, Lionstone, Morton, Specs, Total Wine, Trader Joe's, amongst others, are folks that we uh, do business with. And this is a business channel that's been growing for us. We've been figuring out more and more over time. Um, in the grand scheme, it's relatively new. Um, we've been doing private label type business probably since 2000 and, uh, 2006, 2008. Um, still, we're growing in that vein, and we're also growing quite a bit in the vein of bulk pre-harvest supply contracts. So we're going to talk a little bit now about uh, bulk wine market challenges, things that are perhaps impediments to doing large volumes of business. And uh, first things first, is, is anybody from Cleveland in the room? No? Because 
We're going to talk about loyalty, or in this case, lack thereof. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he looks good in yellow, doesn't he? Laker yellow? Anyways, um, with bulk wine business, oftentimes buyers want to have a selection in front of them. So it's not to say that it's insurmountable in terms of getting over this lack of consumer loyalty. And consumer loyalty in the bulk business, of course, is winemaker loyalty. Um, but winemakers oftentimes want to see a selection of wines put in front of them. You can build rapport with them over time and get them to come to you over time, but oftentimes they want to sit down and evaluate who's producing what. So it's a challenge. It's not insurmountable, but it is a challenge. There's also a very competitive landscape in the bulk wine market. So there's a lot of producers now producing good wines on a high quality tier. And how do you set yourself apart? How do you become the little green guy on the arrow that's not only going forward but upward? Um, it's, it's a tough thing to do, but if you produce great quality wines at a great price year in and year out, it's not insurmountable. Um, so onwards and upwards. Another key challenge to the bulk wine market, whether you're a buyer or a seller, is when do you buy and when do you sell? Do you buy only when you need the wine, or do you try to time the market a little bit and try to buy when the market's a little bit lower, sell when the market's a little bit higher? Obviously, if you can buy low and sell high, you're going to be ahead of the pack, but it's difficult to do. And one of the key metrics by which you can employ to, to help you do that is to be informed on what the market's doing. And, of course, relying on your broker partners, your wine broker partners, is crucially important for that. Are we way behind on time? Are we doing OK? All right. Um, so we're going to talk about some opportunities um, and some things that can help set, up for, set you up for success from a supplier perspective. You really want to know who you are. You want to know who it is that you are and what it is that you do well. What are your core competencies? Are you a grower in Monterey County that has 1,000 acres of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay? If you are, then why are you dabbling maybe in South Valley French Colombar? That doesn't make much sense. Uh, that's not to say you can't diversify and do more things over time, but you certainly want to know what it is that you do well and, and uh, exceed uh, in, those, in those arenas. One thing that we found more and more in the recent years is that wineries that get ahead in the bulk world are wineries that are making wine with intention, making wine with, um, with no, um, without making compromises along the way. In years past, we saw more wineries that were just kind of making bulk wine just to make bulk wine because they had some excess, perhaps because there was a spot opportunity. But to bring grapes in with intention for a bottle program or for a certain style will certainly help set you up for success. Knowing the market is crucial. I mean, it's really hard to pinpoint what exactly the market's going to do. But the more conversations you can have with educated people and the more you can educate yourself on what you think the market's going to do, the more you can be set up to uh, capitalize on, on the right pricing at the right time. This ties into pricing it right. You always want to price your bulk wine appropriately for what it is, given market conditions, given supply and demand. And this comes back to knowing the market and having those educated conversations with your grower partners. Uh, when a deal comes to the table, you've got to understand that somebody has seen your wine, tasted your wine, decided that they liked it, and then they've given you a call. So you've gotten most of the way there. I mean, you've got to just, you know, of course, you're not going to take a low ball offer. But when a deal comes to the table, you've got to recognize that you've done the work to make the wine, to submit the sample, to get it in front of the client. The client has gone through probably a few samples from different people. They like your wine. So don't lose the deal. And then leading the market. Leading the market's pretty important because you don't want to be in the position of uh, that winery that you know, prices the wine high at the beginning of the market cycle. Uh, they carry through the process. They end up not selling their wine because their wine is priced too high. They elected to kind of hold out because they thought other market dynamics were happening. And then they're left, they're left with 60,000 gallons of Chardonnay in their tanks before the upcoming harvest. You, know, it's, you want to lead the market, get the wine out of your tanks before the market really cranks up. And then some things that we see from different supply partners, and even from ourselves in the past, as far as things that have been difficult to overcome or, or common pitfalls, are when wineries kind of try to expand too much or try to become everything to everyone. Obviously, if your core competency is making wines in that $15 to $30 retail price point category, it's going to be tough for you to compete in the $4.99 category. Um, for us, with our comp with our company, where we really exceed is in the $12 to $40 retail price point. We're focusing on coastal wines for the most part from the Central Coast and the North Coast, also some Napa Cabernet. Um, but that's really where we excel. There's certain things that go above that price point for us, and anything that needs to go below that price point for us, we end up sourcing and buying from other producers that can make it at a, at a cheaper cost. We don't have tanks that allow for 
you know, 12 load fermentations at one time, we can ferment one or two. So we know that. We don't try to be who we're not capable of being. And I think that's pretty important. Um, oftentimes, there's really no excuse for anything other than stellar quality in the wine business these days. There's enough technology, there's enough experience uh, to where you should never be in the position to where you've shown a wine to a client that's got a flaw or a fault. Um, this is something that will obviously get your wine kicked out of that tasting, but it also has potential larger implications in terms of not getting, um, certainly not building rapport with that client, but also not getting that client to taste your wines in the future. So you've got to be pretty careful about the wines going out the door and make sure that they're free from fault and showing as well as they can be. Tied into this, many wineries have embarked on employing a blending winemaker to kind of polish up samples before they go out to the bulk market. That's great if you can do it and if you can administer it. Um, if you can administer a little bit of blending that polishes the wine up before it goes out, that's wonderful. But it is, it is a tough thing to do and a tough thing to administer with different tanks and different compositions going out to multiple different people at the same time. Poor oak quality and oak implementation is another thing that we see that, that tends to kind of push your wine to the bottom of the pack when it's getting viewed by a buyer. Um, it's, there's so many great oak products now and they oftentimes need to be implemented early in the wine's life to get proper um, integration into the wine. We find this to be a really important selling point these days. And then many wineries have a hard time with really facing the numbers when they're in a tough position and ripping off that band-aid to really right size their inventories. So that's a really important piece of the puzzle as well. If you're making bulk wine and you're having to crush grapes year over year, you want to be able to have your inventories right sized such that your buyers look at what you have, they respect what you have, and they also don't um, see that you're long on prior vintage wines that just push you into a really tough position, not only in terms of the carrying cost of those wines over time, but also in terms of the fact that wines, when they last, when they sit too long in your tanks, they tend to degrade in value. Of course, there are exceptions. Um, Cabernet being one and Napa Cabin specific, but oftentimes you want to clear out those tanks before the upcoming harvest and uh, take advantage of the opportunity to, to right size for the next vintage as well. Um, so I don't want to take time away from my associate Jim. Jim's going to talk about some more private label and control label programs, and I'm sure Lauren's going to introduce him as well, or if we're we going to have a break. Okay, great. Okay, great. Well, then I kind of rushed through it because I didn't want to cut Jim off, but. Uh, are there any questions? I'm easy. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lash out at you. No. All right. Thank you.